the majority of the country enjoying a fairly quiet weekend after days of wild, wet weather, but there are huge changes, massive changes on the mm -hmm. horizon. Good morning and welcome to America's Weekend Headquarters. I'm meteorologist Ronald Tool. And I'm meteorologist Kelly Cass. We're so glad you're joining us. Coming up this morning, we want snow. We, everybody else is like, no, I don't, yeah. I don't miss it <laughs> at all as far as my commute and having a day out my car. Uh, but if you look at the temperatures for today, Reynolds, it's kind of hard to get snow when you've got these above average readings. Yeah, another swing and a miss really in terms of the season for much of the Northeast. We're talking New York, Boston, even into Washington, D.C., going one degree shy of 60. Bismarck with 27. Mm -hmm. Dow 72, Kelly. Yeah, it warms up for your Sunday. These are your Sunday temperatures, even Denver going up to 44. Uh, there is some blue and even purple on the map, so don't turn purple. Don't let your lips turn blue, right, yeah. when you got the cold <laughs> air across the Tetons of the West. But that's really the only place where we're at least average for this time of the year. 221 million of us above average temperatures by Tuesday. Can the seasons just not stay in their lane? <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's ridiculous. By Wednesday, the shakeup continues. 206 million above average temperatures out to the west. The cold air holds on. Ah, uh, but we're adding on to the millions below average, 84 million below average by the time we get towards Wednesday. So therefore, there will be some cold air to play with as we track our next winter storm next week. All these temperatures here definitely going up. We go from rising temperatures to falling rain. Check it out. Rounds of even rivers that are out of their banks right now. You've got the Black River, the Big Black River, Mississippi. Also, the Pearl River um, is out of its banks right now. Minor flooding for the most part, but every once in a while you'll see a gauge that's at moderate flood stage and this is because we've seen so much rain just over the last 48 hours. You see all the flood reports coming in from northern Alabama down to southern portions of Mississippi and especially across the Ohio Valley where we saw way too much rain. And remember, the ground a little bit hard this time of year too, so it doesn't absorb as efficiently. As I mentioned, we see some rain, the, uh, the gauges along some of these waterways, not just minor but moderate flooding going on here in the southern portions of Mississippi. We've got the Alabama River there in southwestern Alabama that's minor flood right now. And we've got a few gauges that are going to be in moderate flood stage over eastern Kentucky as we go through the next couple of days. Remember, even after a rain event is over, it takes a while for those waterways to come back down again. In fact, they still continue to rise in many instances. So our jet stream is basically steering these disturbances to the east as we head into the new work week. This is Monday. Of course, President's Day weekend, a holiday for so many. We're going to be tracking some cold air, cold enough that we will get some snow, um, especially where we've already had a lot this season. Minnesota, one of the one states here in the Midwest where we actually have above average totals with snowfall. But everyone else is experiencing deficits and in the northeast this next system brings more rain rather than snow. Here's a look at our forecast as we go through Monday. There's your snow for Minneapolis. Not so snowy for Chicago. You've still got some sunshine and relatively warm temperatures. Wet times for the upper Ohio Valley including Louisville, Cincinnati and eventually pushing into the northeast as we head towards Monday. Mind you there is a little bit of purple and blue on the map but that's all elevation. As you head into the mountains, the Adirondacks, there will be some snow even into Tuesday as the system kind of moves off the coastline line here Tuesday in the wake of that system though that's when we're going to start to feel some of that colder air rentals and that will also eventually filter into the northeast so that will set the stage for our next system that you're going to talk about oh that's right nice shot there of Hyden Kentucky but drought across the golden state of California we still have you know moderate drought across many areas but hey this system um, will bring another bout of moisture we've got the rain for the valley locations snow for the higher elevations and the Sierra Nevada that snowpack is still above average we've been dealing with a lot of systems coming on shore all those atmospheric rivers that we had a couple of months ago. We still have plenty of that moisture as well. But now we, early next week, here comes another system that can, comes across the southern tier of the country. Both disturbances moving east, one coming from the north, the other one coming from the southwest into the Lone Star State. And unfortunately, we will be setting up that threat for some heavy rain and some thunderstorms once again across the south in that warm sector of this next winter storm that we'll be tracking. So to the north, yes, there will be some snow. That's why we have a name here winter storm olive but to the south there is going to be that threat for the th showers and thunderstorms some of which are severe uh, damaging winds cannot be ruled out isolated tornadoes so we want to give you guys a heads up as we head into the middle of next week this area right in here will be the focal point of some showers and storms out ahead of that cold front so let's kind of break it down starting off on your Monday right around midnight you can see the showers and storms uh, moving through the Pacific Northwest your snow in the higher elevations here comes that rain down into your Redding, all the way through Crescent City and down toward the San Francisco Bay areas we head into Wednesday. All the blue is your snow. And notice Seattle and Portland 
We've got you guys in the blue. Temperatures are going to be below average, even down to the valley level. So there will be some travel implications uh, due to that. But of course, the Cascades will see the higher amounts of snowfall. We're talking 12 to 18 inches of snow. This is Monday through Wednesday. Look at the 18 to 24. Reynolds, your favorite spot. Look at that, Jackson Hole. We're talking two feet of snow coming through there. And here's a look at Salt Lake City. We're even here on the valley floor, not just the benches in the Wasatch, Salt Lake City itself. We will see that snow moving through Tuesday night into Wednesday. Yum, yum, give me some. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> to go along with that snow with the next system. And speaking of ice, we had it certainly over the past few days. Uh, some icing reports here around Niagara County, also across the Tug Hill Plateau. Now, we have had some snow as well, but unfortunately, freezing rain has added up in some of these spots too, like Millinocket. Uh, we saw about a quarter of an inch of ice, and that's enough to not just glaze the highways, but also kind of weigh down some of those tree branches and result in a few scattered outages. Here's a look at it's your Wednesday going into Thursday. The blue, of course, is your snow, but that warm air comes in a lot, and therefore we've got the ability to get some of that freezing rain and sleet uh, showing up there in the pink and purple. Elmira, you get into the rain as we head towards Thursday afternoon. Through the north, though, it's all snow. The Adirondacks into New England, and in fact, we end in snow as that cold air eventually wins out by the end of the week, and by the end of the week, Reynolds, that system moves out, but there is that potential. We could see some heavy snow here. Oh, that is so true. I'm there in Nashville. Yeah. Linda Franklin for a a while. I love it there. Well, music is great. It's not just country music, by the way. Oh, that's true. You know, we leave that beautiful shot to show <laughs> you something that would be the equivalent of my nine-year-old daughter's bedroom. This is a <laughs> mess. This is a mess for next week, and we're going to have messy conditions across much of America. Uh, pick up the socks down there, would you? Really? Exactly. Uh, Savannah looking hot. Meanwhile, it's cold over here in the Rockies. So we've got these two disturbances that are moving east where you've got the cold air. Obviously, that will play out with snow. But to the south, we're concerned about showers and thunderstorms, which could be strong or severe. Most definitely. I can tell you right now that in terms of your rivers in North Georgia, like the Tacoa is rolling at over 1,000 mm -hmm. cubic feet per second. And this is going to add more rain to a lot of your, well, look at this, much the Ohio, mid Mississippi Valley, all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Uh, looks like the cutoff right north of you in Indeed. Chicago. That's where we find some of that snowfall. Too soon for numbers because, you know, this is a system that we will be tracking toward the mid and latter part of next week. But you get the overall idea with the green showing you where they have the potential for rain. But way up there to the north is uh, going to be the snow. Absolutely, yeah. So certainly a lot to follow as we go forward in time. That's how we round up very quickly. Severe weather prospects for your Wednesday stretch from Little Rock to just south of Memphis, clear down to Alexandria and Macomb. Well, we are often told that industry can bring, well, opportunities, jobs. But for people living in Louisiana's Cancer Alley, it also brings dangerous work conditions and health problems for people that live in the area. But two women say it doesn't have to be that way. In this week's Faces of Change, we meet the dynamic duo Joe and Joy Banner. And, uh, yeah, quite the contrast. We've got 81 degrees in Dallas and only 22 for your high in Minneapolis. So you've got the snowflakes also for Minneapolis, but it's going to be sun beaten down on you in Dallas. Some of you are saying a little too soon with that kind of hot weather, but that will be the story for so many across the eastern half of the country as those temperatures are getting bumped up. Uh, we've got this system moving into the Pacific Northwest early next week and tracks across the entire country. So the first system lays down some cold air. The second one has even colder Arctic air to work with and therefore a bigger stripe of snow, if you will, right up against the Canadian border, but also down through the northern and central plains as temperatures take that deep dive. We're going 20 to even 40 degrees below average by the middle to latter part of the week. Still hot stuff, though, across the east, 15 to 25 degrees above average. So quite the contrast. If you look at the nation, we've got these dueling temperatures here, 206 million above average. 84 million below average. And we're talking about a good chunk of the West, the Northern Rockies, and even the Plains. Uh, we're going to increase those below average temperatures, though, as we head for Thursday. More cold air swinging eastward and southward. Uh, but still, a lot of warm weather across the eastern uh, side of the country, 190 million with those above average temperatures, getting into record territory, in fact, for some of you. Look at Atlanta by Thursday, 83 degrees. It has been a while since we've been that hot, since we've even cracked 80 degrees. 76 degrees on Beale Street in Memphis. Contrast that, though, with minus one for your high temperature in Bismarck. Only 18 degrees around the Twin Cities with that snow coming through. Orlando, Florida. We've got the sunshine. We've got very warm temperatures. Even for in central Florida, we should not be in the 90s this soon. And you can see as we go forward, even into the beginning of March, we're still going to be very much above average for the southeast. Northeast, you cool down and we are 
going to stay on the chilly side for much of the west. And as we take another look farther out, Reynolds, obviously take this with a grain of salt, but there are indications that will warm up the south, the southern tier of the country, with some colder air for the Pacific Northwest. That's it. No doubt. Meanwhile, we've got this system that's going to be... And the National Park Service says our nation's parks are already witnessing the impacts of climate change, but they're working to respond to the crisis. That's right. And of course, you can see more stories like this one weekdays at noon on Pattern. Hey, should we check out Houston? Do we tell Houston's them? cold so far this year. Very true. So we're going to get a break in the action. Then we go from, let's see, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It looks like the second round comes on through. And these are all the elements that we have at play. Yeah, so the next one kind of parks itself <laughs> right across mm -hmm. the plains in the Midwest for several days. We've got the moisture component coming in from the Gulf. And, you know, we're going to see the cold air, enough cold air for some snow to play out here, especially where you see the purple. Yeah, models are not in complete agreement, but they're pretty close, giving you a general idea of where we could see some heavy snow. But there's more than just snow, Kelly. There's no. another element to get with. We don't want that. Nope. Uh, but there will be that shallow cold air. Um, so unfortunately, that will mean the possibility of freezing rain from Ames, Iowa, all the way through Milwaukee, even Chicago. Uh, there's that possibility of a glaze of ice out there. Messy conditions. And it's amazing just what a few miles will, will mean for you. You go farther to the north of Marquette, you'll see some scattered snow showers. But you go farther to the south, you could run into a pretty heavy amount of it. Notice how Chicago, though, you're hanging out on the freezing exactly. line. Like the whole duration there. of the storm uh, back toward the Quad Cities, Rockford, Illinois, um, up towards Madison, Green Bay. I think you guys are going to see more in the way of snow, maybe some sleet mixed in. And then Thursday is still with us over the Great Lakes, but then finally exiting the area by Friday. Absolutely. Detroit looks like you're also going to miss it, too. But again, there could be some fluctuations in the forecast. You're not out of the woods completely. All the reason to stay vigilant. But look at this, at least in terms of uh, your, your heavy snow, looks like it does belong to Minnesota for the yeah, most part. Yeah, we're not putting numbers on this yet, right? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> this is too, it's too soon. we got to work out the details. We've got to work out the exact track of the storm, the cold air in play. For Minneapolis, it's looking like it's going to be a snowstorm for you guys. Mid-30s for Monday and then dropping down to 11, 22 for a high on Tuesday. Absolutely. And speaking of winter storms, winter storm Olive is ramping up, but a lot of places have just not dealt with the snow that they typically do. We've got some weather, uh, yeah. you know, being a factor at some of these sporting events. I think in California that we're A-OK. -okay. Yeah, I would say so. This should be OK at Pacific's Palisades. Palisades, you mean to say, for the Rivers Country <laughs> Club. Uh, mix of sunny clouds, marine layer, maybe pesky early, but it gives way to plenty of sunshine. Mid-60s, that's a really oh, comfortable yeah. temperature right there. Daytona Beach, the 300 today, the 500 tomorrow. Yeah. This is your forecast for tomorrow. Today, I think we're fine, but there will be a few showers by the end here. By Could happen. Block. So, yeah, maybe some umbrellas out by the infield. Meanwhile, for this contest in Raleigh, North Carolina, hockey, hockey. outside yeah, hockey. above the freezing point, but not too bad, though, Kelly. Hurricanes and Capitals going at it, and yes, temperature's cool, but not quite cold. Yeah. Cold enough for ice? I don't know. There you go. Hey, ever been to Key West? Never.